Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. It is the final season finale of Greenleaf. Yes, we have made it to this final point. Greenleaf season five, episode eight, entitled Behold. For those of you who are new to the channel, welcome, kick your feet up, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss any posts. I got the recap, review, and discussions to end this wonderful season. It's all coming up next. Lady May lays with Bishop after his passing and she places the engagement ring back on her hand. She's accepted that her husband has passed away and decides to share some peaceful moments with him before telling everyone else. She hugs him, she sheds some tears, and we can see her leave the bedroom. In the other room, we have Grace and Sophia discussing the photos that were shared with Dante, and Grace convincing her that yes, this is something that occurred in your life, but don't let that stop you from going to school. Grace's phone is ringing off the hook, and Sophia tells her mom, go ahead and get that, because I wanna think about what we talked about. As a matter of fact, I really don't wanna talk about it. Grace then answers her phone and it is Anne Holiday. And this is the same employer that had interest in Grace concerning journalism a few years before she came back to the Greenleaf estate. And she tells her that she catches an ear that she has something to do with the Whitmore scandal and she has interest in her coming back. And she wants her to consider coming to New York for an interview and she has a lot of slots for strong women of color to join her team, although time is of the essence. Grace tells her that she'll give it some thought and call her back. Lady May breaks the news to Grace and the rest of the family, and they share their private intimate moments with Bishop in the room to just share a few more of those moments before his burial. We do see the family later gather on the estate to have their own private funeral there. We then see the family hold hands as Charity sings songs to give them some sort of uplifting after the funeral. The family joins together and proceeds to walk back to the home. After brief, brief conversations concerning Bishop's memories, AJ talks about how he wants to finish the car no matter how long it takes and that even though he only knew him for a short period of time, he feels that feels that Bishop made a very strong impact on his life. Lady May excuses herself to make a phone call and the board infer informs Lady May that Phil and Connie are gone and they want her to leave a service at Calvary and they want her to leave the service that contains information about how to move forward, memories about Bishop and just coming back and just giving everyone some information some inspiration to think about what they've achieved over the years and what's to come. Noah shows Grace his new home for him and AJ, and he expresses that he has a new job, which is the director of campus safety. And AJ also shares his information, letting her know that he has conversations with the doctor and his health is much better. Noah even expresses that his ex-wife didn't want any alimony, so him starting anew with a new job, with him and AJ, is just a clear break. And he also tells her that she's more than welcome to stay with them and enjoy the space that they have together. Grace calls Darius as she leaves the house, and AJ wants to know, who is this guy that has been calling her and giving this special glow when he calls? And that whoever it is, he wants to meet him. And Grace is open to that. But she says, hey, pump your brakes on that situation. Jacob and Carissa have a brief talk concerning Winky. And Jacob tells her, you know, you're more than welcome to stay here while you're looking for another home. And Carissa tells him that she has everything sorted out. and She's going to stay somewhere until she can figure out what's going on with her living situation. And she doesn't want to confuse Winky, and also she doesn't want to confuse anything between them. She reminds him that, hey, we have to accept that this is our quote-unquote happy ending. 
Zora, Sophia, and AJ discuss what they think happens after death. But AJ says what's most important is that we talk about and think about life, not death so much. Grace and Darius discuss that her opportunity in New York is a good idea, but Grace is concerned about her family needing her. And also Darius, because he'll be there as well. Darius tells her that she should consider her future and what she wants, even if it's in New York. And Grace tells her, tells him that, you know, I, I, I might go to New York, but I'm just leaving everything behind. And he says, well, you're not leaving everything behind. And when it comes to us, I might come to New York and there might be some opportunities for me. And she asked him, you're going to follow me out there? And he says, I'm going to follow you out there. I'll accompany you. And Grace is overwhelmed with happiness. Lady May informs Grace Charity and Jacob that the board isn't giving her the church back, but wants her to speak. And Charity and Jacob are on board when it comes to supporting their mom. And Grace keeps getting those calls from New York and is distract distracted with thought. And everybody at the table notices it. But Grace breaks her distractions and agrees that she's on board as well. Corinne gives condolences to Lady May and welcomes her back to the church. And Lady May says, you know, with all due respect, could we not mention my belated husband? I need to stay focused. And I'm not exactly back yet. I'm just giving a speech about how we can move forward. Lady May then walks into the empty bishop in which Bishop used to reside and asks Corinne just to give her some time alone to just reflect about Bishop and past memories. Jacob visits Tara concerning the house and Tara gives her condolences and she also feels that this so-called quote unquote getting justice just needs to be left alone and she doesn't want the house. She feels that God will provide her with blessings in another way. And she doesn't want his widowed mother to be thrown out of the house. And Jacob seems very shocked. But Tara is very confident in knowing and feeling that everything that went behind getting the house and obtaining the house just doesn't feel right. And she doesn't want to have anything to do with that and feels that everybody just needs to move on. We then have Aaron and Grace. They meet up so she can sign legal documentation concerning a trust fund for Sophia and AJ. And she says that money is officially off of her plate. And she just wants to move on. Aaron then discusses with her that he notices the calls that she's getting. And Grace tells him that it's the, that call of an opportunity that she may have in New York concerning 2020. And Aaron says that if it's meant to be, it will be. But you've got to go for yours. You've got to at least go out and see if there is a possibility in it happening. You can't just think about it and disregard it because you may have some anger in the future that you never took grasp of that possibility. You've got to at least talk to Anne and for yourself make that final decision. Don't stay back because of family and how you think others may feel. Lady May is conflicted about what to speak about and she shares those concerns with Jacob. And Jacob tells her the news about Tara and that she doesn't want the house. And Lady May says, wow, Tara really is who she says she is. She walks the walk and she talks the talk. But she's very thankful that Tara didn't want to proceed with anything legal and trying to get the house. People gather at Calvary. We see them happy and smiling outside of the church and inside of the church. And Jacob sees Tara. And Tara says that she not only wanted to enjoy the sermon, but she also invited her mission as well and hopes that Jacob isn't concerned about that and he's okay with that and she hoped that it would bring him some type of joy because from her sister Tasha she learns that that was one of his ministries helping the homeless and she also mentions that she can't work help but to think of what possibilities they can work for in the work with in the future that maybe the three of them meaning her Winky and Jacob in the future can talk about how they can help even more people 
And then we see flirtatious eyes between Tara and Jacob. And he tells her that he's excited for the future and that he's glad that she's there. Jacob also lets Tara know that he's thankful that she made the decision to allow his mother to keep the house. We then see everyone going into the auditorium and Charity is leading in song and everyone in the auditorium is filled with smiles and joy and you can see that they're just thinking of all the previous memories of Calvary. As Lady Mae gets onto the stage, everyone starts to clap and welcomes her back. And she talks about how she couldn't think of a topic. And before they dive in to the memories of Calvary, she kept hearing her husband say, talk about something new. Talk about everything that has to do with the new beginning in your life. And think about what has never been. Think about those things together as a conversation. And while she's speaking, AJ is deeply touched by her words. And she's saying, Lord, please make me new. And we see members of the board also impressed with her words. Sophia even whispers to her mother, Mom, I think your work here is done. AJ is so inspired that he comes up front and he wants to start over and make a new. And we see Cherry Jacob, Grace, and Lady May encourage him and follow him to the front. After the service, Grace reports to her mother that she overheard the board saying that they want her to come back not only next Sunday, but all of the Sundays following. And Lady May says, you have something to tell me, don't you? And Grace tells Lady May that, Mama, it's time for me to go. And Lady May pleads with Grace and saying, no, not now. Please, I need you. But Grace says to her mother, you're ready. It's your time. And I'm sorry, but it's my time to leave. And Grace says that she must follow her heart. And Lady May accept her, accepts her decision with a kiss. Grace says goodbye to the entire family and jokes about keeping an eye on Zora while in New York because he knows that she'll get the job. But Grace says, this is just the interview. And Jacob says, no, I know you'll get it. I feel it. Charity confirms it, so does Lady May. And Lady May also thanks Grace for coming back home. And then when she came back home, she fulfilled her purpose. And her purpose there at home was fulfilled. And she wants nothing but the best for her daughter. She says goodbye to the rest of the family, and Grace drives off, viewing the Greenleaf Estate the same way she did arriving to the property in Season 1, Episode 1. And that is the end of the episode. Before I even talk about my review and discussion questions for Greenleaf, I want to say Thank you so much for those of you who have been rocking with me from the beginning, since season four, since the beginning of season five. Thank you so much. It means so much to a newbie and a rookie YouTuber compared to the, all the other reviewers. It means a lot to give this channel a chance to click on, to listen to me for a few minutes and decide whether you wanna keep watching. So that is a big step. Thank you so much. I always say thank you during and even to the end of all of the shows that I recap and review. This is just one show. I encourage you to just look at all of the other shows that are on the playlist once again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, getting to this final episode, it was very touching to see that clearly the cast didn't need any time to gather tears or to need a moment to get into a dark, sad place to bring tears. They brought on those tears, I know, from behind the scenes and also reflecting of all of the years being on this show. I can only imagine as an actor having those castmates that you know, that you have been together with for five years. You might as well say four and a half going on five years. That's a lot. All of the thoughts of, being canceled and then the fan base bringing you back uh, is big. And for those of you 
um, who are unaware, please look at the last video um, about Greenleaf and why it came to an end. There's a lot of information on that concerning the network because a lot of people were still confused about why the show was coming to a close. So please look at that video. I give a lot of information about why and how amazing shows can come to a close. I talk about the production, the writing, everything. So please check out that video because it gives a lot of detail concerning the spinoff and of course, like I said, why the show is even coming to a close. Now, a review about the episode, super obvious that the show and its writing was rushed. I explained that in the last video because it was rushed because you have to remember there were a lot of things coming to a close in season four. The, the show was scheduled to be canceled in season four, but the fan base brought it back. There was such a demand for the show to come back for season five that they brought it back. Then there became this rush of what to do with the writings. But I do agree when with, with a lot of the things that I said in the last video that I think it was necessary to hurry up and rush everything because you got to think about budgeting. You got to think about how much time was allotted to hurry up and wrap up the season. With that being said, with that allotted time and with that allotted budget, I think it was fair that they kind of summed up a majority of the ideas of what to expect next. They wrapped up a lot of the things with the main characters, which is very important. I probably say 60% of the questions that we had in mind for a lot of the characters were answered in some way not completely but in some way it gives us an idea of some sort of closure for everyone so i will say that about the series it was very entertaining I loved the fact that they said, we're gonna hurry up and smush this together, but we're gonna give this kind of uplifting message at the end. We wanna at least show that we appreciate the fan base. And I really think that's what they did. They didn't leave us with too many dampering inform informations about the characters. In other words, we did lose Bishop, but it showed some type of uplifting plus to all of the characters. Zora was an uplift ending. Sophia was uplifting. Her briefly discuss discussing with her mom that the pictures weren't that bad and she should consider going back to school. Jacob with the closure with Carissa, but at the same time kind of giving a nudge and maybe a wink wink about a nice little flame. Will it be between Tara and will it be between uh, Tasha, the two T's? Who knows? Will there be some, hey, you got to pick one situation? And also with um, Grace, she does still have that conflicting love, even though she has a little bit of love for Noah. We do see some uplifting status between Darius and Grace, letting us know that there's potential with that. So they leave positive afflictions with all of the characters. With Lady May, there's a positive affliction of her leading the church. It's something that she always wanted to do from the beginning anyway. So we see this positive affliction that she finally got, not only the church she wanted, but doing something she wanted. Not settling for having uh, her sermons and everything at the bar. Even though it was something that she didn't want, she had peace in continuing those services at the bar, but it's not what she really not wanted. So we see these positive things. Also with all the other characters, Noah and AJ, they're moving on as father and son. AJ having the positive affliction of starting new, being saved, making sure that his health is great. So. He left on a positive note with a lot of other series they could care less about your feelings and they'll give you the bad news about plots whether it's good or bad many of us can attest to that who are fans of orange uh is the new black what a downer right when it came to the last of that season but anywho it's positive affliction i think they did that because they had so many people rooting for this show and like i said watch the previous video about why the show came to a close in the first place 
Also, I have some notes here that I'm gonna look down at. I wanted to try to get all of my notes edited and post this as soon as possible. So I'm gonna have to look down for a second. I thought it was really interesting how they ended the series the same way it began. In season one, episode one, we have Grace coming into the Greenleaf estate in the car looking outwards, thinking about the future till the end of season five, episode eight, her looking at the green leaf real estate, leaving the premises and thinking about what's new. The constant messaging of thinking about what's new, Lord, make me new, give me a new. So I thought that was really great. The writing was great considering the time frame and structure and budgeting that they had. Um, uh, Jacob giving those little notes and nudges of the spinoff information about, hey, keep an eye out on Zora in New York. It was kind of, ooh, that was kind of a, a mediocre writing on that part, kind of winging it out. I mean, I think they could have disguised what are the possibilities in the spinoff without it being so blunt in your face. As an audience member, I love to figure things out for myself and to keep me guessing, but they had to hurry up and rush everything um, back together. I do find it interesting that the board members of the church and the elders, how quickly they were able to turn everything around. Now, I know that they had the information concerning H&H &H and Bob Whitmore and the scandal with the real estate and all of that, but was it done that quickly? Can contracts, you know, I know that the writing was kind of thrown together because it had to end it, but as the viewer, you think, if it was that easy from the beginning, why go through all of this treachery about the everything with H&H and, &H and it just it just seemed too easy. Everything seemed given to them on the on a silver platter just because some information has been brought up about H&H &H and all of the, the, the quick scheme scandals that they did. You do have contracts. You do have real estate. You do have all this stuff. We still haven't went through the court of law to settle anything. So the fact that they were able to just, oh, you know, it's bad. We got Calvary. We changed the name. It's great. The H and H is gone. So is Bob. It's kind of like, okay, <laughs> if it was that easy. But you got to think it's a drama series. They can do whatever they want. It's make believe. It's not like we're watching the episode of Law and Order, and it's not like Dick Wolf is writing it. It's not like it has to be one hundred percent factual. It's TV, you guys. So, of course, there's some things I was watching and I was just kind of looking up like, what? <laughs> you know? But I do, like I said, I do appreciate that they wrapped everything up because if they didn't answer at least the core and the crust of what we wanted, you would have had an audience pretty PO'd, pretty upset that, what? You didn't even tell us what was going on with H&H. &H. You didn't even tell us what was going on with What? Um, it was really disappointing to see that not only did Bishop pass away, but the way he passed away, I thought that in the last season, the last episode, that maybe he passed out uh, or just lost consciousness. Uh, the way he died was kind of awkward. And since <laughs> he's such a crisp actor, uh, the death scene, uh, death scene seemed kind of comical. So I didn't know if it was real. Uh, the death scene could have been done a little differently. Uh, and it was just weird. He had a stroke and the way he had a stroke and the way he passed away, eh, kind of kind of awkward. Um, and I think that there should have been a little bit more detail to that. If you're gonna have your one of your main, most loved characters pass away, I would want that scene to be done a little better than it was you know, executed. But hey, I mean, you know, I'm not Steven Spielberg. I can't sit here and, you know, say that stuff. I mean, it's just, it's TV, you guys. Um, also, I found it interesting how they were able to just get rid of Connie, how Phil was gone. It was, it was so easy. It almost was frustrating. Um, but I'm glad that it was, it was brought to a close. Make sure that you stay tuned for the next video, which will be uploaded tonight as well concerning the homegoing episode, which is 
episode nine, technically, regarding the cast members and what to expect in the spinoff as they answer more questions. But as an audience, we can make an idea that it's ha gonna have something to do with Grace, with Zora. We have those characters uh, migrating to New York. We have Darius, not following her, but accompanying her to New York. We also have Charity and her place. We also have a lot of majority at of the family at home Noah is connected with AJ and the core of the family is there still in the same city same state uh, except for Sophia who's going to go off to school so that lets me know will the main focus be with Grace in her journalism and things that she finds which to me is more interesting anything that has uh, something to do with journalism has a little bit more of an interest because stories new stories will always come there can be several plots with that it could be politics it could be uh, economics it could be anything things dealing with mega churches we don't know that plot line seems a little bit more feasible to me because you have the gung-ho city of new york that is the city that never sleeps so that could be something that could be murder mystery it could have something that has nothing to do with the green family or a mega church it could just be about stories murder mysteries it could be something like that so that would be interesting to me also another feasible plot like it or not hear me out on this you have Zora and Sophia with them being young women and going to school now I know a lot of you said hey if this turns into an AJ Sophia Zora spinoff I'm gonna be pretty PO but think about it spinoffs are exactly that we're spinning off to something totally different same people you know who these people are but we're spinning off to some completely new so put mega church green leaf out of the mind when it comes to spinoff we are spinning off to something completely new if it's dealing with that which off top seems kind of cheesy but it will be young new and fresh something that every network loves and desires anything that has to do with new and young you have plenty of time to work not only with the, the cast members because they're young we can start with a young cast and we're growing with them we see them get older you get me we see them as young adults and then we see them evolve into their mid-20s okay that is something that that networks love when they see that a cast that started young gets old, just like good old Hollywood, they're quote unquote tired of you. It happens with every series. Just for example, an example, The Cosby Show, right? Once Rudy wasn't at that age of cute and bubbly that you just wanted to just pinch her little chinks and bounce her on your, her lap because she just looked so cute. As soon as she got to preteen, they introduced uh, Raven Simone now we have the young character again okay happens with every series once the cuteness is out you're out you're an adult boo 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 put bring the child back in child wow factor here we go <laughs> happens with every show when you think about it like that it's kind of messed up but that's the way the shows work uh, you know once we get tired of you out with the old in with the new minute you show a little crow's feet boo boo they looking for something new um so those would be technically the way that writing works what would make the most sense when it comes to a spinoff uh the one with grace and darius makes the most sense because we have these two new lovebirds in new york looking at different things concerning journalism you got love you got sex you got stories that constantly emerge that makes more sense of course i'm not a writer but to me that is what i would do because it sounds more interesting sounds way more interesting than what's going on at on the green leaf uh situation with the church okay that's just the way that things work if they do sprinkle on a little something about green leaf I can make a guess that when she calls back home, says, hey, how are you doing? They fill her in on what's going on at church. Girl, you know, Tara talking to Jacob, what? You know, they working with the homeless, what? But then, you know, girl, next week, now he talking to Tasha, what? It's drama. <laughs> Let me know what you think. Stay tuned. 
for episode nine, the homecoming celebration, which I will recap and review as well. In the meantime, check out that last video where I discussed Greenleaf and what happened and why the show's coming to a close. Stay tuned for more shows because there's so much more coming up next and I can't wait. I also have movie trailer recaps that we're gonna talk about, what to expect, so much more. In the meantime, check out other shows before the new seasons begin, okay? We got Hulu, Wu-Tang, and American Saga, amazing show. Go ahead and hit that playlist, start from the beginning, season one, before season two pops up. We have so much more, you guys. I love you so much. Thank you for rocking with me. Let me know what you think in those comments. You know, I say hello and respond to everyone, whether we agree or disagree. In the meantime, take care of yourself. Don't underestimate and undermine COVID-19. Be safe and precautious, but not fearful. Until next time, bye. Oh, and one more thing, subscribe. <laughs> Please subscribe. Our goal, you guys, is to reach a thousand. There's so much more I could do once I reach that thousand mark. Many of you are watching. Over 80% of you guys are watching but not subscribed, okay? So I need you guys to subscribe and like this video. Like every single video because what that does is that brings awareness to the channel and also share this family-friendly show, excuse me, this family-friendly channel with friends and family. Let them know that they have a sigh of relief knowing that they're not going to come across anything vulgar on this channel. Anybody can watch. In the meantime, I love you guys. See ya.